What up, y'all? Back again. Today, uh, I wanted to talk to you about the narcissist. They seek two things in a relationship, to avoid pain and to seek pleasure. And so the problem that occurs and arises with us in that situation mainly is that they have absolutely no empathy, so they really don't care about you. And so, and a lot of times in a toxic relationship in the beginning, they will idolize you to get you hooked, you know, and then they will, it's kind of like when a fish gets hooked in the mouth, right? They get pulled out of the river, the ocean or the lake, right? And that's because what, what I'm getting at is, is what did it do? Because they got hooked, they got pulled out of their environment. And that's what the narcissist does to you. They pull you out of your environment. And where do they take you? Into the fantasy. They take you to believing what the mask is, uh, what they're trying to portray for you, what they've built for you to believe. Then they overpower you because they've already got you knocked off. You're already wobbling. You know, you're already on shaky ground because they've been, from the jump, they've been using you. They've been manipulating you and, and you were coming at them legit with love. And so they're getting your emotions all caught up and tangled up in their web. They're getting you addicted to them through the trauma bond. They put you, they idolize you and then they drop you down to Death Valley, right? But uh, what they're doing is, is they're becoming uh, in control of your whole domain. Everything that you represent, they're changing your whole life. And what happens is in these relationships, by the time you figure out what's going on a lot of times, then you've been fixing their life and then you turn around and look at yours and it's destroyed and you don't even know who you are anymore. And that's part of the problem with the relationship with the narcissist. It's all one way, their way. And you have no say so and you are always losing, whether it's financial spiritually, mentally, physically, physically, everything is going downhill in your department because you're always bringing them up. And so now when, you know, you leave, you still feel as though, or they still feel as though that they have ownership over you and you become part of the harem in their garage if you let them. But, you know, they have created this trauma bond in you by idolizing you. You know, and so then when you declare or demand independence is when you break that state of perfection that they have for you, that idolization phase where you're perfect. Now, you know, they fall in love quickly, right? So in the beginning, you're perfect, you're idolized, but it's really an infatuation. It's not love. They're just with new supply. They're excited and they're love bombing and they're investing, but it's superficial investment in you. Uh, and so everything that they do in the beginning, they have to fake and that's why it takes a lot of fuel. That's why they can't love bomb all the time because they're they to do something fake, it takes a lot of fuel. So they have to be devaluing somebody in the background a lot to get that fuel to love bomb you. And they have to be motivated. You have to be worth it to them because they're investing in all of this faking, <laughs> this faking and future faking with you. Things that you do wrong in the very beginning, they will ignore them, but then only to bring them up and question them later and devalue you with them. You know, there'll be a problem later. All of a sudden, you'll check them, you'll question them, you'll say no to them, and then you're not perfect anymore, and now you're in devalue phase and you start to get this passive aggression, you might get ghosting for a few days just to make you feel insignificant with no explanation, you know, just to make you feel like they can give you uh, love, they can give you a relationship and they sure sure as hell can take it away in just, just a matter of minutes, seconds. And so it makes you and gets you to give them all the power and all the control uh, because you want to keep the relationship going at this point, you're so far into it, you probably don't even realize you're attracted to this individual you have become now with all of the things that they have put into place. 
And so you can't separate yourself from them because, you know, you're supposed to be an extension of them. You're an object to them and they're the ones that make all the decisions. They want you, they will start to act out. And all that acting out is to control you and to conform you. And to, that's why they want you to be what they call malleable on this platform, which is like a piece of metal that, you know, they can hammer into shape. And so they're trying to conform you by creating all of this disarray and all these arguments because you're, you're not acting the way they want you to. So to get you to conform, they have to cause these arguments and get you to break down and accept it and, uh, break down and, and get wore out and tired of arguing with them and just accept the fact that they're going to be able to do whatever they want and then it's going to go further from there. And so there's no autonomy, no independence. And if you try to have autonomy and independence, they won't be able to believe it. And, you know, a lot of times that's when you end up leaving them because you start to realize that Things aren't adding up. What they say doesn't add up with what they're doing. Their actions don't meet their words. And in in any situation, whether it is uh, business uh, or family or a love partner or friendship, they should always match. How about that? So anytime that you question any of those, they don't match up, then you're, you have lies in there. Somebody's manipulating. Walk away. These are things that will help you get, uh, build good boundaries to not get your mind too much involved in a situation and just kind of live by the boundaries because the boundaries are clear truths and you don't need to give anybody benefits of the doubt anymore. There are certain situations where you're wasting your time to give them a benefit of the doubt. When you give them benefit of the doubt, you drag yourself in deeper and there's more repercussions and more destruction. That's boundaries are there to keep you from walking into something too deep. Do you ever hear that in too deep? That's what we did with the narcissist. And boundaries keep you from getting in too deep. Okay. And so it's a big deal. Boundaries are a big deal. It's not just stuff that we talk about on these platforms. It's real, y'all. And so when you have closure with them, you 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 know, you have to form your own closure. And so that's difficult for a lot of people, but you can't just focus on closure and knowing that you're never going to get it because you're not going to get it from them. And it's hard, you know, for you to get it uh, by yourself. It's not typical. It's not natural. But this is what you have to do in these cases. So when it comes to closure, in, in my opinion, you need to just be aware, seek out the knowledge and the understanding that you can, um, uh, form a perspective that is that, you know, you were used. You know, you were used, you were abused, it was a crime. Uh, those are your answers. Uh, you know, you're probably not going to get anything too definitive, but, you know, it helps you to understand. Uh, you have a title to put to it. It's narcissism. These people are sick and they future faked you. You had a lot of anticipation for dreams and things that were supposed to be. They're not going to happen. You lost a lot. You may have lost a lot of money. You lost a lot of, you sacrificed and you have to just accept the fact that there was a lot of emotions involved and you have to just walk away from all of that. And you have to just accept that you can't get stuck. A lot of people get stuck. And that's my point. It's just, it wasn't real as far as what they were portraying. It was fake. And there is no way to get your money back you know when you've been robbed you've been robbed and that's what the narcissist did they robbed you in a lot of ways and you're not gonna get a refund you know you can't call home office <laughs> there I mean it is what it is I'm not saying it. it's not funny I'm just saying but you have to come to a conclusion that it's over there it was a called what they call a long con you know they conned you and the best thing you could do is is just um accept it and to move on but to build boundaries so that these things don't happen again you just uh you got robbed and accept that you know it was a crime and 
you know, they don't stick around. You know, when the crime's over, they, you know, they run away with the bag, right? With the goods. And that's what they did to you. You're the vic you were the vic victim, but you're not anymore. Because I say, you know, you're a survivor and a warrior when you wake up to this and you walk away from it yourself. Because in these cases, these criminals come back for more. And so you have to be smart enough, whether you're into them or not, to let it go. Because they will wreck your whole life. They exploit, narcissists exploit. They only come to an individual to exploit the individual. And that's very difficult. And it's hard to believe that they never loved you. That you have to understand that. And this was hard for me. It took years, a little bit of time, quite a bit of time to understand that the person never loved you. And you could be with them for a long time. You could have experienced a lot of things with them, but they never loved you. And they will, you know, wreck you the longer you're with them. But they're exploitative. So if they can exploit you for something and they can get something out of you, then they'll stick around. But when they're done and or you've woke up and you're going to give pushback, then they're going to run away with whatever they can get. And if they do come back, let's say we talk about these Hoovers all the time. If they come back for a Hoover, it's because they could still feel like they can get um, something more from you. And you got to understand that. It's just exploitation. There is no love. They don't love. Then they have no empathy, so they don't feel it. It's evil. No love is just evil. It's the animalistic nature of the human. It's not humanity. It's, it's really like the beast of the field. And that's, that's why it's so difficult. Because you see a human, you think they're humanity, but they're really like the beast of the field. And so they're just there to protect their image. Their image, the mask is their image. And their mask is, is everything to them. And that's all they care about. They care about, of course, supply. They care about everything that is fleshly, you know, anything physical, anything uh, commodity-wise, anything that's fun, and anybody that can, you know, give them validation. But at the end of the day, that's all they care about is everything is outside. It's all physical. They have no inside, inner man, inner woman, inner spirit that, you know, will have God, they just, it, they don't learn from anything. They don't, you know, if humanity does something evil or bad, they, they, they try to learn from it. And so it's not normal what these individuals do and it's hard to deal with. But um, what you will realize with them is their words don't meet their actions uh, and that, you know, if you try to deal with them, you know, as far as like, it, if you have an issue, then they're going to confuse you with strange words. They're going to talk bad about you and smear campaign you. And then you will realize that they have cut you off completely, leaving you confused, shocked, and just what the hell just happened. And then disappear, leaving a mess behind them. And that's what they do with everybody. And then, you know, if you recover, they'll come back. But, you know, you have to get in your head and in your mind and your heart that it's over, that this is spiritual warfare in the physical form. And the longer you stay with these individuals, the more that they will destroy you and they will take your dreams, your vision, your health, your wealth, and anything you have uh, relationship-wise with the Lord and destroy it and leave you dead in the dirt. So if you're on still, give me a like, subscription, a thumbs up. Love y'all. Peace. We out.